Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Design. I am back with a Buy the Well for God haul. So, I'm excited and yeah, let's take a look. So, just before I forget to tell you, um, Lori, they just released the pre-order on the next one after this and it's based on Psalms. So if you get a chance, go over to her Etsy shop, buy the well for God and, you know, tell her hi for me and get the next devotional because it looks amazing. I have it in my cart. I'm waiting for payday and then I'm going to order it. So, but this I'm behind. So, and it's okay with me. I'm okay with that right now. So I have received, while I open this, many, many phone calls. I mean, many, many, not phone calls, sorry, um, emails. And I've tried to, and I'm so sorry, I've been so late answering you guys, and I apologize. Um, but we are good. Um, we are fine. I have been, I, I feel like I, every time I look down, I've got dirty nails. I feel like a gardener's hand. You know, I should, and I now I get what the green thumb is about, because when I go out to prune, and I don't have my snips, and I'm breaking things off. I mean, I come back in and I've just got stuff all over me. But, um, and I don't wear my gloves. So, um, but I try to do all that. But like today, I went out and, you know, walked the garden a couple of times. And then I, you know, just planted more seeds and checked on my seeds. And if any of you want to see all that, go to my Instagram. They're not great pictures. I'm doing the best I can. I'm using my, pho my phone. My phone's on the way out, just like it did that video when I walked you guys through the garden. Um, the garden has grown since then. Um, we are actually even talk, even talking about, we would love to put a high top greenhouse on the property, but that is very expensive. And my husband said, why don't we go? I found one that was less expensive, not as good on Amazon. And, but I think we're going to give it a try. And his point was, let's just see, let's just see what we do with it. And I was like, you're right. Why not? I mean, and a lot of you have been concerned how we're feeling, how we're doing, we are doing okay. Um, just like everybody, there are good days and bad days. I'm going to be really real here. Um, there has been so much that's gone on in our country here in the United States. And, of course, I live down in the south in Texas. And, um, and we're more southwest, um, but it considered southwest, at least basketball-wise. So, anyways, <laughs> yeah, go Spurs. But, um, anyways... Um, we we are doing okay um i was just we go monday to get our blood work we have had so much work so many things come up so much so much going on with our children and um and and, and it's good stuff and typical life stuff nothing major i don't want anybody to worry but um to get up and be there by 7.45 and then get back, shower, be ready, be back on calls, ready to, to work. And then in the evenings, you know, we're, and, la and, and I haven't even told you the best part, last week, or, you know, I guess Father's Day weekend and then this Monday and, was it Monday, Tuesday or weekend? I can't remember. Anyways, my youngest daughter and I, we went out and we worked like a dog. I mean, a couple of dogs. <laughs> we were out there working. We got everything off the porch that had been with you know from my mom and dad's house we got we found a box of things from my grandmother and um and a lot of it was just totally you know just trash we literally filled our trash can we did this tuesday evening and tuesday morning when we picked up our, our trash and my husband said wow we filled the trash can i wish we'd have done this before <laughs> but we lit everything we put what's called fairy lights everywhere and you know the little lights in the gardens they're all solar powered the mason jar lights wind chimes you know my husband raises poultry we got a solar lit rooster and all that fun stuff and my husband when he came back he's like this is amazing i love this and then when he got to the porch and it was all cleared and our two rockers sat there with nothing in them, under them, around them, behind them, um, he just looked at me and he goes, oh my gosh. And I turned the table that we took out that was the bird's table. I turned it into a planting. It's a little desk. I turned it into a planting table on the porch. And then I got everything else but off but one box of car parts my husband has up there. He's always fixing cars, you know, our cars or whatever. He just, he loves tinkering. It was beautiful. I, and I try to put pictures up. I'll try to get more pictures on Instagram. I've been kind of slow getting it done. 
Um, phone crashed again. Had to rebuild it. I mean, you know, crazy. What's that? Alexander and his horrible, terrible, very bad day. You know, we had a couple of those in there. Just crazy things going on. And then we ended with Texas being close to a shutdown. And I'm going to be honest. I've been in since March. The only thing I've done is either ride in the car when my husband went in or driven and gotten pickup curbside in the way back with a hatch up and a hatch down that I have a, a little button in my car. And I was so excited to go to Tuesday morning and walk around Hobby Lobby and you know what? It just It's just not meant to be right now, you know, and it's nothing in comparison to hospitals being filled to capacity in Houston, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio. My heart is aching for all the people who are sick. It is, um, I just can't even get into it, you know. Um, here in Texas, there are those that are continuing to proceed forward, and the governor's most likely going to have to shut it down because people, when they went out, they haven't social distanced. And I know I've gotten letters from y'all and emails that are telling me that y'all are going through the same thing in your state. That is my number one prayer, that you guys, if we get shut down, that y'all don't get shut down again. Because I have to be honest, I, I, I you know, I just want to go out. And this weekend we went and looked at some land with our oldest daughter and son-in-law and our grandbaby. And our friend um, is their realtor. And I hadn't seen him for a long time. I've talked to him, but I hadn't seen him. And um, and I love his wife. He was accidentally trying to call her, and it kept coming through the car, and I kept talking to her, so it was so funny. But anyways, our car was picking up his, his phone call, and he wasn't hearing it. I was hearing everything. But, um, and every time we'd start saying, well, how you doing? How's everything going? Click, and he'd redial, and hey, how are you doing? And I'd click, redial. So anyways, but... Um, I, I held my grandbaby this weekend for the first time since March 10th. It was amazing. She remembered me. That's all I can say. And now I thank God for that. Um, she saw me and she was just, she was in the stroller. My daughter was going to take her and, you know, leave her with me in the stroller and just walk a short while. And she started squirming and reaching for me and kicking and crying. And when I picked her up, she actually has real tears now. It makes me want to cry. And she grabbed my hair and she grabbed my shirt and she was holding on so tight. She was not going to let go. And it took seconds for us to hug, kiss, snuggle. She immediately dove her little head up underneath my chin like she likes to snuggle or she used to like to snuggle. And it was such a blessing. All I could think was, thank you, God. She remembered me. I know that's silly, but she's seven months old. You know, I'm sorry. If I knew how to edit, I would edit this part out for you. <laughs> But I, she was wearing the sun hat I gave her, and she never took it off. And I had my hat on, and she kept playing with the string, you know, because it's the kind you throw it off the back and you pull it back up when you're in the sun. So I have a picture of us sun, sun bonnet girls together, and um, just she was pure joy. And I held her for three hours, and I woke up Sunday, and I could barely lift my arms. They were so sore. <laughs> but, I mean, it was... And my daughter, you know, and my son-in-law, and our son and daughter-in-law got home, and they came back. They got home Wednesday night, and they came by yesterday. And I just felt so badly because I wanted to be close to them, but I knew they had been traveling from multiple states, and we have to distance. And now they have a family wedding on her side this weekend, which, you know the struggle, and... um they now have to socially distance after that because there'll be people coming in and you know he's just it's so hard because you love your children so much and their spouses and our grandchild and we had to tell our youngest yesterday that if her university will not put online classes in a week or two my husband made the decision he goes she's not going and I felt so much relief because of that. But then I felt so sad for her. And, you know, I asked her today, are you okay? Or, you know, I hope you're not mad. And, you know, and she and I said, you know, if you're angry, it's okay. You know, I get it. But we just love you more than anything. And we would never want you to be at risk. 
And, and this is the only university, the major universities in Texas are not going back, you know, <laughs> until the fall, which it looks like now they're probably not going to go back in the fall. Um, or they'll do a half and half. You can choose to work from home or you can be in person, you know, kind of thing. I mean, their university was suggesting, you know, half come in and then switch off and the other half come in and the local parents on the local news, which I haven't seen the news in months and I watched it, um, yesterday they were pitching fits so and they're right to it's a wrong it's a flawed system and uh anyways and pray for our oldest and her spouse because they're still being required to go in and you know because they're grad students and uh i guess when you're working on your phd your life is not your own and so anyways we'll see how it plays out but just to hold that grandbaby i'll be okay <laughs> i'll be okay and she, I took pictures, and she was smiling in every picture, and I just, every, we sang songs, I told her scripture, I talked to her about Jesus, we sang Christian songs, hymns, um, we did everything I would do when I would take care of her, and I would tell her how much Jesus loved her, and God loved her, and it was wonderful. So all of you that have asked those questions, I, I felt like I, I knew I would tell you here, so I could tell everybody. Um, she is gorgeous. She is beautiful. She is very smart. Um, not by us, but by her parents. And, um, I mean, you know, I'm early childhood specialist. So I, you know, I was telling my daughter today, you do recognize this, this, and this, and you do need, you know, you're asking me what should you be doing for, and I said, this is something you might want to consider. Um, you know, cause that little girl's going to make them put their, fast track shoes not their tennis shoes but their fast track shoes on <laughs> and um and i am her grandmother so please forgive me i know i'm gushing but if you saw her picture you would know she's gorgeous so <laughs> anyways <laughs> she's a little ginger head which nobody has red hair but my great grandmother my mother had strawberry blonde hair and i have touches of it but it's really brown and because i grew up on the coast it went blonde on the you know on the tips um, but I will tell you right now, um, I did my hair first and then hers became ginger when I, you know, did my hair this last January and she, um, she has the biggest blue eyes. She has, unfortunately, my big old head, but it's, she's just a striking young, young little thing. And, uh, and what's most important is that incredible smile, that joy, that incredible joy that you know wanting to learn wanting to be told the things that are above you know just wanting to hear the stories of jesus and she loves it i mean i was shocked at you know like you know if she could say more i think she would say more you know and um just didn't want to play the silly games wanted to talk about the things that we talked about every time i would go take care of her interestingly enough so, um, I don't know when I'll get to see her again. Um, that's a hard thing. Of course, we'll Zoom and we'll make phone calls again. We'll have phone calls. So, my heart aches for our son-in-law's family because I can't imagine how much their heart must hurt to not see their son, to not see their grandchild, their daughter-in-law. You know, um, our children, we socially distance when we're together, all of them. And it's just... It was just a special day, and um, I didn't care how hot it was. <laughs> it was worth every second, and um, yeah, so that's the story. Everybody's been asking. I wanted to share it. Sorry I cried. I know. You know me. So back to By the Will for God. Now I was going to make five and ten minute videos, so maybe I should turn it off, restart, <laughs> but <laughs> that's what I'll do. I'll stop. We'll come back, and I will do this in a separate video because I want to be respectful of your time. Um, I love you guys. I'm going to go ahead and post this video because I didn't get today's video up, and I think yesterday's didn't load somehow, but I'll, vote, I'll load this one tonight. So you'll officially get the at least Monday through Wednesday and I think Friday. It, I had some loading issues, so um, the new formatting is just, you know, every now and then if I'm too sleepy late at night, I boo-boo. So anyways, but I'm going to close this. I'll come back with this um, unboxing, but everybody that asked how we're doing, we're doing good. My husband, I'll finish this out really quick and tell you, my husband did go, um, he went and got another truckload of soil, 
and um, we I've been out planting and um, watering and all my babies that are coming up in their little pots and um, it, it's just I have to say last this last week has been the hardest it's the first time I've been sad um, throughout this whole thing besides all the lives and the loss that's been just devastating in every situation whether it be health or the police issue or you know all of that and and again you know there are good there are good policemen please forgive me if I'm offending you but there are we are daughter-in-law's dad is a officer police officer in Austin and we highly respect him and he's a good Christian man and there are good officers of a uh, homeschooling um, mom's husband is a state trooper he is such a good man and I just can't say enough there are good men and women serving our serving our nation in their individual areas and we so appreciate them and for those that um, are clearly um, out of sync and that's a polite way to put it um, I think the education and reform is highly needed and uh, my husband he was so funny. He said, you should have been up there. You should have been saying what that mayor should have been saying. And you should have been saying what the president. And I was like, no, no, no. It's easy to, you know, um, backseat drive. And I said, no. But I said, this is what's going to have to happen in order for our nation to even come to a point of um, sitting down and talking and, you know, and listening and encouraging and not being dangerous, not being, you know. And so I just want to say that at this point right now, um, that has broken my heart. Um, I have so many friends that are of diversity. I have, we have a blended fam. We have a fam, not a blended family, but a very diverse family. And you know what? I don't understand it. I really don't. I, I just don't, I don't get it. Um, I was talking to my sister-in-law today and I just said, I, I, I don't get it. And she goes, I totally get what you're saying, Chris. She goes, I know you don't. And she's of a different ethnicity and she was just laughing. She goes, yeah, we don't even have to think twice. And I said, no, no, no. But I, I just, I struggle to understand. I struggle to understand how people can behave. And, um, you know, and I, I, you know, I have lived my life never perfectly, never perfectly. But I will tell you right now that they will know us by our love, John tells us. And I've said this many times. And in, in a gentle answer turns away wrath, Proverbs tells us, and do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The golden rule, and guys, and I believe that's a Matthew, yeah, it's Matthew, but anyways, long story short, I cannot say enough that we have got to take a step back and everywhere, I don't care where you live, um, we all need to take a step back and make sure that our hearts are right and that the conversations are good and that we encourage and build each other up. And the scripture talks about that's edifying. So let us edify each other. And that means to lift each other up to the Lord for the best possible life here on this earth. And let's, you know, let's be there. Let's, anyways, I'm sorry, I'm not going to cheerlead this. But, um, yeah, I mean, I've been in different countries. I've served in different countries. I've, you know, I've been blessed to do that. And I don't, I don't, I just don't understand. I really don't. Um, I, I just really don't. And, um, I don't understand how anybody can act the way that things have happened, um, at times in our, in our history. And so, um, that being said, there's that on the table, but guess what? God knows what's next. He knows what we need to be doing to focus on, to build better lives, to encourage each other to move forward. So, um, yeah, you can tell I've been pretty emotional with all this. Our son is a, um, kind of a civil rights, I hate to say it, expert. And, um, but he is, um, that was his undergraduate and, and graduate studies. Um, his theses were written on that and it's been a very interesting few hours. He's been on the phone with his daddy and, um, good conversations, good conversations. And, you know, um, it's just, and it's not that my husband was one or the other, he just, it, in his world where he grew up, it, he, he didn't feel affected by it. And, and I, I, I believe it, he was affected in other ways and, um, not for good always, 
um, due to his environment. And not that he took it on, I'm just saying he had this influence around him. And I think that at this point in life, um, we just need to love, you know, the greatest of these things, you know, faith, hope, and is love. The greatest of these is love, the Bible tells us. And uh, we just need to, to find that place and look beyond. Um, look beyond gender, ethnicity, financial abilities, education, whatever it is that we are, um, that can cause division. We need to look beyond that and we need to just love each other. So, okay, my friends, <laughs> there's my thoughts. There's my two meager cents. That's what that's worth. Not much. But, um, but it has affected our, our, it has affected my heart. There's no doubt. And then talking with my sister in Houston, um, it is rough. It is, please be in prayer. Hospitals are at 100% capacity. ICU, you know, ERs, the whole thing, guys. Um, she moved to a different hospital so that she wouldn't be as exposed to COVID. And ho that hospital is now taking COVID patients and quite a few quite a lot. I'm not going to say a few, a lot. And, um, yeah, I mean, she is exhausted and, and not only in the middle of this, did she switch, you know, hospitals after 20, almost 29 years at one, it's a whole new restart for her. So please, if you don't mind praying for her, pray for her sons and our, and our brother-in-law, her husband and his daddy, his daddy is older and lives in the area. And I just am very concerned about him. And, um, and we love him. I mean, he's family. That's, he's just family, you know? So anyways, but anyway, so that's that. We are good. We are healthy. Um, I do have some things that need to be attended to. I was getting ready to go take care of those things. Um, my son-in-law heard it this weekend and he was like, what? You need to get that taken care of. And I was like, I can't right now. And he started asking questions, which was so kind of him to even care um, cause he was saying, you need to get this done. I said, well, I can't get that done until I get this done. And yeah, you know, those conversations go, but, um, you know, he's, uh, he's a good, he's a good young man. And, uh, to ask those questions was very kind of him. So we are good. Um, I am enjoying planting. Uh, my daughter and I talked last night that all this comes out, um, this weekend will be, um, juicing all our grapes. We have almost 10 pounds of grapes or 10 gallons of grapes, pardon me, 10 gallons of grapes um, from our grapes, grape vines to make grape juice. And I'll be canning that for my husband. He's so excited. I just got my steamer uh, a day or two ago and I'm going to be canning our figs and canning our peaches. I'm going to make a uh, fig, like uh, fig butter, like fig Newton, you know, use it to make fig Newton. And then I'm going to, or put a schmear on, you know, your bagel, your toast, whatever you want to do. Um, your English muffin, and then I'm going to also do all of our peaches. Um, our, my husband brought in more peaches tonight. I was just like, okay, we're already at like, you know, we have four bags of peaches in the freezer because <laughs> we, my youngest daughter is amazing. She's been pitting and peeling and cutting and chopping, and so I told her, I said, well, we'll do peach butter with it to make it really easy. We'll keep some to make like a peach sorbet and, um, you know, a few things like that. And then um, I will also be making, we've, she's never canned before, so I'm going to have, I'm going to do like the Concord grape juice jelly. I've never done it before, and I thought, what a good way to get started again. And, and I've been fermenting, and I've been um, refrigerator fermenting, and um, we've had lots of pretty cucumbers and all kinds of stuff, and tons of squash. I've been dehydrating, and um, I was showing my husband, and he was like, do we really want to dehydrate that? And I said, yes, we do. Because if you can it, he goes, it goes to mush. And I said, yes. So we have zucchini and yellow squash and we have an acorn squash plant that's going. We've got herbs. I've got herbs going everywhere, hanging from the kitchen, <laughs> in the dehydrator, getting ready to set up jars. Um, I've just been using them as they come in, but now I'm realizing I need to put them up for the winter. So everything is just lovely. We are getting rain, which is such a blessing. We're getting the unfortunately the the dust and uh i'm fully stuffed up and um but it's all good so 
anyways, and we are all healthy. So thank you for everyone who's asked that. We are still doing well health-wise. I still struggle a little bit with my immune system. Um, it comes and goes, but we may have found a treatment. In, in all of this, we may have found a treatment that's working. That's a miracle after, I don't know, 11 years? That's pretty good. <laughs> Actually, more than that, it's almost 20, it's 20 years. Wow, 20 years. Ah, okay, I didn't realize that, 20 years. But, um, and, um, yeah, my husband's still working, and we're thankful for his job. And um, when he went to go get the soil yesterday, he stopped on the way home, and he hit Walmart and um, our grocery store, H-E-B, and he picked up a few things. And I said, after that, I think we're good. I think we've done a good job stocking, and God willing, we've stored it effectively and you know hopefully it'll hold you know it'll keep us it'll keep us between the garden and the things that I've put up I think we'll be okay and um, and that's a miracle I mean that really is and honestly right now they already have the systems in place so we'll be able to get groceries God willing and I can order walmart.com and the struggle still is our local post office uh, here in Lockhart it is you know they've been very kind to help me but we've also had pushback for some of the, from a staff member that was not polite and uh I think she pushed she pushed a button that was just lawsuit worthy and I just said you can't do you know this can't be done I'm just telling you you guys have a history of this don't do this with me I've never raised a fuss but I will tell you right now this is unacceptable and um yeah she was just not very nice and um hopefully she's retiring soon <laughs> but anyways and the postmaster has been very kind to us as well as the supervisor so we are very blessed by those two people but we just don't get it very often. So, um, but long story short, hopefully we'll get that ironed out again. And, you know, um, we can do curbside or we can have them drop it off. And I, it, depending on how bad it gets, um, we may have them deliver groceries or we may just go to curbside. You know, we'll just have to see what happens here. But um, according to the news tonight, if the numbers don't turn around, the governor's going to probably um, continue to shut things down and it looks like mayors may in the large cities may cut may shut things down and that honestly you know outside of essential business or business that you can do like if you own a shop you can go in and work in your shop um you know if you can do anything remotely that's important um we know so many people have lost their jobs lost their businesses but their health is so much more important and yeah that's just how we feel so, anyways, but but we're hanging in there, and our kids are back home in the in the area, and we're thankful for that. They're each in their homes, and we're thankful for that. And we did get to get away and go to our son and daughter-in-law's home after they had been gone a while. And on the way back last weekend, we spent several hours there. Honestly, we fell asleep like two old people because it was so hot. But anyways, <laughs> I told my husband, I said, "Man, we're old." <laughs> he said, "Yeah." <laughs> But it was great. It was a great little refuge for just a few hours. So, so lovely. And their house is beautiful. And they've worked so hard to make it nice. And it was such a blessing. So, and then their first day, they got back late um, Wednesday night. And by Thursday, they were over. And uh, I was really like, they're not going to come over. They're going to be too tired. And anyway, she has a lot of family in. And uh, for their wedding, their family wedding. And so, you know, they wanted to come over. They went and saw them. And... They came by and visited us from a distance. We still distance. So, anyways, so that's it. Nothing special. Just same old thing. And uh, and I'm the one thing I have to say in my gratitude journal and my gratitude on my planners. Not only am I thankful for God and my family and the ability to get through these struggles, but also for my garden. Um, I go in my garden every day, I talk to the Lord, I pick, I prune, I plant, I water. Um, I've been looking at these fancy baskets that you put your veggies and fruit in because I've just been carrying them and juggling them like a juggler. And I've looked at the fancy aprons, I've looked at all that, and I'm just going to take out, I don't know, probably a Dollar General basket around here. I decided I'm not going to spend that kind of money. And... Uh, I've got enough stuff around here. I can find something. I can empty something out and take it with me. Um, I'm just bringing in so much now. It's such a blessing. And uh, we restructured part of the garden last weekend. Last Sunday, my husband and daughter, on Father's Day, <laughs> put up some fencing. And our 
cucumbers, our melons are in hog heaven, and I mean, look so healthy now. I mean, amazing. Our produce, 